Remember when Universal Orlando challenged me to eat at all eight of their hotels in one day? Well, we're back with a new adventure. Hey there, man fam. We are back at Universal Orlando to eat our way around some of their hotels. Universal invited us exclusively to come back and try some of their food for Magical Dining Month, which is a staple around Orlando. So we're going to have some delicious eats and drinks, meet some of the chefs. We're bringing you with us. Let's come go. Yeah. Magical Dining Month kicks off in the fall every year, this year on August 18th, and it runs through October 1st. It is hosted by Visit Orlando, and this year there are a record 132 participating restaurants, which clearly some of those are at the Universal Hotels. During Magical Dining Month, you will be offered a $40 or $60, depending on the location, pre-fix menu at some of the best eateries around Orlando. It is an awesome program that I have gone to many years. In fact, I think every year we've ever lived in Orlando, we've gone to Magical Dining Month with friends because it is such a great way to try awesome food at a great price. And if that wasn't enough, they donate portions of each meal to the Lifeboat Project. That is a nonprofit fighting against human trafficking. So it is a super fun event. Super excited that Visit Orlando invited us to sample at North Italia the other night and that Universal Orlando invited us back to do this exclusive preview of their menus as well. So I'm hungry just thinking about it. Let's get to eating. First up, we are at the Hard Rock Hotel. This is a premier hotel here at Universal, meaning one of the top tier hotels. And it is home to two restaurants that are hosting Magical Dining Month, the Palm Restaurant and the Kitchen. Last time I was here, I was very pleasantly surprised by the food at the kitchen. So I can't wait to see what they have in store for us. Alan, have you been to the Hard Rock before? One time, but I went to a bar and then left. So no. I mean, technically, sure, but we're headed into the kitchen. This hotel is so fun. If you are a pop culture fan or a music fan, this hotel is awesome because all over the hotel, they have real costumes and instruments from rock stars, which is awesome. So we are at the kitchen. And what are we about to enjoy? <laughs> yes, so um, this is one of my favorite items that we have on the menu. This is our kitchen burger. To me, everything that's good about food can be encapsulated into a perfect burger. For this, you have different textures. You know, you have soft, you have crispy, you have chewy. Um, as far as temperatures, you know, there's warm, there's cool. As far as flavors, it's a little bit sweet, there's salty, there's a little bit of sour in there. So whenever you take that perfect bite, it's just ethereal, so. I love that. And the other dishes you have for Magical Dining, you're doing the short rib ragu. Yes, so that yeah. is actually one of my wife's grandmother's recipes. Um, she was from Ancola. Um, and, you know, whenever I first started uh, dating my wife 20 some odd years ago, um, I was always in the kitchen with Nana, so. Awesome. Well, super excited to dig in this burger. I want to eat it while it's still hot. I think you should. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm in a good place. All right. We're about to try the kitchen burger. This is one of the signature items here. It is a half pound burger, grilled black Angus beef, melted white cheddar cheese, caramelized mushrooms and onions, applewood smoked bacon, lettuce, and secret sauce. Number 17. I wonder what sauces one through 16 were like. Cheers. Yeah. I don't know how to, you know what? Okay, the chef's not standing right here anymore, so I don't have to say this. Not that I would anyway, but this is one of the best burgers I've ever had. I don't know what Secret Sauce 17 is, but I like it. It's just so well balanced. The fact that it's an incredibly rich burger, but I can still taste the sharpness of the cheese, and there's like a sort of tangy sourness to the sauce. I don't. And I heard the chef mention it being sour, and like, there's no shot. I'm gonna yeah. taste something sour in here, but it is in a good way. In a good way. It's not like a warhead sour. It's just a tang. It's also just like an upgraded classic burger. I don't want to call it simple because it's not simple, but at the same time, it kind of is. It's just a classic burger, cheese, onions and mushrooms. Like sometimes burgers get a little too dramatic and I have eaten many a burger with like macaroni and cheese and all the things like put on top of it. But this is just a like burger. a classic burger done really well. That and the, it just tasted the patty itself. Beef is seasoned perfectly, not too salty. It's just a very well seasoned and well cooked patty. I'm. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. That's delicious. The fries, they are perfect. Do you do something special to them? You know, these are um, pretty much, you know, 
know, straight up, they're Lamb Wesson 5 8 um, no coating or anything like that, just tossed in table salt. Uh -huh. Are these a double fry too, or is it a single? Damn. Well, so just we, crispy. I Perfect. guess technically, yes, okay. you know, they're pre blanched um, okay. in the company. So. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. And up next we have the Key Lime Pie, which is a sweet and tart Key Lime, whipped coconut topping, Coachella dates, and, toasted, and a toasted pecan crust. It's also worth noting that the Key Lime Pie is both vegan and gluten-free. Now also offered on the menu is the S'more Brownie Sundae and the classic Creme Brulee. But this just looks beautiful. You can see the pecans in the crust. I'm really excited about the crust. Oh wow. Cheers. That crust is awesome. So is the coconut topping. The best part about it is the key lime filling is actually tart. A lot of times when you get key lime pies or like lemon icebox pies, they dilute the citrus with a lot of sugar to try to make it more palatable. This is still sweet, but it's not overwhelming and it still has the tartness of the lime, which is what I want. Especially if you just ate a burger and an appetizer. When you come do Magical Dining Month, a third course is included. And here it could have been uh, their, their bisque, their wings or a salad. So by the time you get to dessert, you're pretty full. And this is a nice, light, refreshing dessert. I don't even love key lime pie, but I'm loving the coconut cream and the crust and the fresh fruit. It's very tasty. This is top five key lime pies I've ever had. Mm. This is so good. Just a drive by hello to the Palm Restaurant. This is the other location at the Hard Rock Hotel that is hosting Magical Dining Month. This is one of the $60 menus because it is a signature steakhouse. We're not stopping there today, but I have eaten here in the lounge and it is delightful. However, we are off to Sapphire Falls. We have just made it to Sapphire Falls, which is a preferred resort at Universal Resorts. Now, preferred is a bit like a moderate resort for those of you who are more familiar with the Disney ranking system. Universal also has four levels of resort. They are Premier, Preferred, Prime, and Value. And Preferred is most akin to moderate. Next stop, Amatista Cookhouse. This is a restaurant open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And at breakfast, they do have a buffet option, should you prefer that. It is a Caribbean-inspired restaurant. I've actually never eaten here, so I'm super excited to see what's on the menu. First up, now this is not part of the Magical Dining menu, but it is their drink special of the month. This is the Amatista Mermaid. So it is rum, coconut rum, pineapple juice, blue curacao, lime juice, and orange bitters. So I'm not always a sweet rum drink girly, but this hotel has proved me wrong in the past, so I'm excited to try it. And regardless, it's beautiful. I can taste the rum. That's the best part. As stated, I'm not always a sweet cocktail girly. I don't love tropical drinks because they're normally rum-based and very sweet. But much like at Strongwater Tavern, you can actually taste the rum. It doesn't just taste like juice, so it's not bad. It also doesn't have a syrupy taste, which I think is the big sticking point for me for a lot of like a Mai Tai, for example, or other tropical drinks is you can taste the syrup. I don't get a lot of that here. It's certainly sweet, but it's not overly sweet. Delicious eats have arrived. We are doing an appetizer here. In fact, we're doing two. We're gonna start with the tropical salad. It is Calera Farm greens, uh, papaya, mandarins, heart of palms, pickled red onions, candied pecans, and a passion fruit vinaigrette. And then this beauty, which I am so excited about, it's queso fundido. It's got Mexican chorizo sausage, artichoke, chihuahua cheese, and some corn tortilla chips. I'm jazzed about this. I will be partaking of the salad. I'll be eating the cheese. We'll trade at some point, maybe, if there's any cheese left. No. A little bit of everything here. Some pickled onion. How cheesy this is. Same. Cheers. You good? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good. <laughs> If I had to describe this in one word, it is bright. Everything about it is very, very fresh, light. The vinaigrette is acidic, but a little sweet. Offset with the candy pecans, which are roasted wonderfully. There's a good textural contrast, some brightness from the pickled onion. I'm just a big fan of this in general. It's a very, very bright, light, and refreshing appetizer. But why get that when you can have a bowl of hot cheese? Yes, why would you? It's no surprise that I love cheese. It's my favorite food. 
this is delicious queso fundido. It's got a little bit of heat from the sausage. There's a little bit of that spice going on there, but it's not overwhelming. Just if you are completely heat adverse, I would avoid this. Mm -hmm. However, it's got a ton of cheese, obviously, as you can see. It's got that nice, smooth, mild chihuahua cheese, which is made out of real chihuahuas, I'm pretty sure. It's delicious and very shareable, maybe. I'll try and report back. And next up we have the eight ounce New York strip steak with asparagus, yuca, and red chimichurri sauce. For some reason, Alan said I should be the one to cut it. It is cutting nice and easy. These are some bebe pieces. You gotta eat on camera. Gotta be a little more polite than normal. <laughs> that sauce is awesome. Oh, 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 wow. Yeah, I can put that on anything. Spicy on the back of the throat, a little smoky, got some cilantro in there. So if you are one of those folks who <sighs> taste soap when you eat cilantro, I'm very sorry. It's present here. Uh, maybe avoid the sauce, but the steak itself is also incredibly tender, well-seasoned, grilled, perfect grill marks. The steak's great on its own. It's only yeah. made better by the sauce. Try the yoko. It's delicious. Shall. Mm. I've not had yoko prepared like this before. I've had yoko fries, and it's very similar to a potato. It's a starch, but it's a little bit chewier, denser than a potato. It's really tasty as yeah. well. Not a ton of flavor on its own because it is just like a starch, but dipped in that sauce. Yeah. Big fan. For health. I already had a salad. And last but certainly not least, we have the Caribbean rum cake, which is vanilla cake, spiced rum and coffee, crispy pecan crunch on top, and some house churned vanilla bean ice cream. It smells incredible. Let's dig in. You had me at coffee. Oh, wow. That looks delicious. You know, I was going to go for a dainty bite. Why? Good question. Oh, <laughs> wow. The spiced pecans make that dish. It's a really good cake. It's dense. It's moist. The vanilla ice cream is delicious, but the true star, IMO, are these candied pecans that are a little bit salty, crunchy, a little bit sweet, adding a nice textural difference. Uh, without those, the, the dish would be too sweet. Without mm -hmm. the pecans, the dish would be too sweet. It brings in, like that's some allspice, there's some cinnamon in there. If you don't like licorice, like a black licorice flavor, you're gonna get a little bit of the uh, anise flavor there too. It's not overwhelming, just as a, as a note, but wow. That is that is just very well balanced. Mm -hmm. How's it with the caramel? My only note, I wish I could taste the coffee more, but that's just because I love coffee. What, what if it was coffee ice cream? Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't know. I think I like the vanilla ice cream. What? Right. So maybe a little more coffee flavor in the cake, but otherwise, that's a very tasty dessert. Yeah. Wow. Made it to our next stop, Royal Pacific. This is another one of the premier hotels. So again, a top level hotel at Universal. The premier hotels, which again are this one, Hard Rock, and our last stop, Portofino Bay, are the hotels that include Express Pass for free, which is an awesome perk. And you can usually grab these hotels at not too expensive of a rate if you come, especially during value season. This is also the hotel that is home to the many decorative frogs, which you may remember from our staycation here. And, this is where you can stay at the Jurassic World themed kids suite to show my Jurassic Park video, which are really, really cool. I still can't wait to stay in one of those. Like seriously, look at these frogs. Look at these guys. What are they doing? That one's playing the bongos. I don't think I know what instrument that one has. A maraca? Oh, and a hat, a jaunty hat. Wow, I love these guys so much. This one's got the recorder. He's ready to shred hot cross buns. This guy's got cymbals. I am a big fan. Island's dining room is open for breakfast and dinner and is the Polynesian inspired restaurant here at the Royal Pacific Resort. And on the inside, look, the continued theme of frogs. We've actually eaten at Island's in the past and while it wasn't our favorite, I do have high hopes for this menu. Up first, we have the Old Smoky, which is Elijah Craig bourbon, simple syrup, Angostura bitters, orange bitters, mezcal, and a filthy cherry. 
this, yeah, this is right up, right up my alley. It's worth noting that cocktails are not included in Magical Dining Month on the menus, but if you're already here, it's worth adding or at least looking at what is available to drink on those menus as well. And they brought me a glass of Pinot Noir, which truthfully, if I'm gonna order anything off a menu, it's most likely an old fashioned or a glass of Pinot Noir. So they just knew. Read us like a book. Okay. That's a nice glass. And I'm just gonna take this. No. Very, very smoky. You don't get a lot of like a tequila taste from the mezcal, but you do get a lot of smoke and then the bourbon comes through. That is fantastic. The mix of bitters is interesting. I'm trying to decide if this one's better than the one we had up at Orchid, the sushi restaurant at this hotel, because they do the old fashions with Japanese right, whiskeys, right, right. and that was fantastic too, but the smokiness from the mezcal. Well, I think this takes it. This is a delightful cocktail. We are trying one of the appetizers available here. The other two are the chicken goiza and the crab rangoon, but this is the watermelon tataki. Did I say that right? You did, nailed it. Uh, it is sesame soy compressed watermelon, mixed greens, ginger soy dressing, and spicy pickles. So while that may appear like it is tuna, that's actually watermelon, and I'm super excited to try it. We are now joined by one of the culinary team here at Islands. Could you introduce yourself and your role here? Uh, my name is Chef Jessica. I'm the complex executive sous chef of restaurants for the complex, um, Royal Pacific and Sapphire Falls. That's amazing. We just had Sapphire Falls Amatista. It was delicious. Thank you. So excited to try this here at Islands. Can you kind of explain what this is and how that it's not tuna? <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to put a dish together um, that was vegan vegetarian that um, was as close to the flavor profile of a, a tuna tataki as possible. So we did some experimenting, put some things together, and that's what we came up with. I'm super excited to try it. It looks beautiful, and I truly would have thought it was tuna <laughs> unless I was told otherwise. Um, and then what is your favorite entree? Uh, the sticky ribs is definitely one of my favorite entrees on the menu here at Islands, and it's definitely uh, one of my favorites on the Magical Dining menu as well. You can get either a half rack or a full rack of ribs on a regular menu. The Magical Dining menu comes with a half rack of ribs, so they're individual riblets, um, and they're glazed, and they're topped with peanuts, um, green onions, and some sesame seeds, and that comes with white rice and sweet and sour vegetables. Mm -hmm. How do you all decide, like, uh, they were explaining to us that you redo the menu a couple times a year. What process goes into that? How do you decide what you're going to put on the menu and what is going to work or not work? Or do you do a lot of experimenting? Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. We take a look at uh, what sells, what doesn't sell on our current menus. Um, and then we um, go back and we put together some ideas based on what sells, what doesn't sell. So if it's a fish dish that doesn't sell, we want to change it to something that um, we think we'll sell a little better, so we do some some experimenting and, and uh, put some things together. Then we do a tasting with myself, Chef Nando, and Chef Mike. He's our complex exec who have banquets. Um, and then we make some tweaks. We let the chefs know what we like, what we don't like, uh, and then they go back. They change some things. We taste again <laughs> uh, with our executive team uh, for their approval, and then it goes on the menu. And how long does that whole process take from, I guess, idea to being on the menu? Uh, it takes about three months. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chef Jessica. I can't wait to try uh, the, tu the uh, not tuna, the watermelon, and, and everything else. Thank you. We have prepared our plate with tataki, spicy, pickle, and our salad. I'm just going to go with the tataki first. Me too. Not tuna, cheers. <laughs> That's cool. Whoa. First of all, we made some mistakes last time we ordered here. Mm-hmm. We should order that. Yeah. Because that's delicious. It tastes like watermelon, but not. It has the texture of watermelon that you've come to expect, but compressed. Has to make sense. With a with a deep soy flavor and a little bit of like sesame oil richness to it. Very, very tasty. Although I have to tell you, I think the spicy pickle might be my favorite thing that I've had in a minute. Although I do love pickles. They do have some heat to them. There's definitely some chili oil on there. Woo! They are spicier than I expected, but I like heat. I like spice. I could eat a whole plate of those, but I'm going to actually eat a pickle and a watermelon in the same bite. Like oh, an no, adventure. Innovator. 
I think that works. I don't know that you need to do it like that, but I do think the spicy and sweet kind of complement each other. Regardless, this is a really fun dish, and this is the one I would pick of the three that are available. I agree. And up next, we have the half rack of sticky ribs. Now, on the main menu, this can come in either a full rack or a half rack, but for Magical Dining Month, it is offered as a half rack of ribs. These are baby back ribs with a sticky Asian glaze, peanuts, sesame seeds, cilantro, scallions, pickled onions with jasmine rice and stir-fried veggies. This is a lot of food. I couldn't imagine a full rack, but this just looks and smells delightful. We're professionals. Yep. We do this every day. Yep. I lost a... Take two. I guess that's to show you how fall off the bone it is. It's literally falling off the bone. Bonk. Mm hmm. How does it taste with the onion? That's a good rib. Here's the thing about ribs sometimes for me they're too saucy. I don't like an oversauced rib or wing, I don't like it too wet. These are not oversauced. Mm -hmm. They are sticky ribs and the fact that they've got that kind of sticky sauce, but it's just like the perfect amount, slightly sweet. Almost reminds me of like a teriyaki flavor is something I would relate it to, um, but I love, love, love. My favorite part is absolutely the fact that they have the sesame seeds and the peanuts on it because it's adding a crunch texture, which is breaking up the rib, and it's awesome. Mm. Just a very tasty rib. Mm. No notes. Now stir fry vegetables for health. Have some zucchini, squash, onion. I love zucchini. Mm. That's just a solid stir fry. Those are yummy. Mm hmm. We ordered wrong. We did. We messed up. We're fools. We're sorry, Islands, for ordering wrong last time because this is delicious. Yeah, that's on us. I also want to do the walk experience that they offer on the weekends where they have a chef in front of you prepare a walk with either lo mein noodles or fried rice or whatever you want. It's like a create your own experience. I love an interactive dining element and that sounds very fun. Plus we were just talking with some of the restaurant management um, here and at, at Sapphire Falls. They were talking about how they have in-house butchers and seafood experts and pastry chefs and all these people that bring the food together. So it really is all made from scratch. It really is quite an experience. I don't think people expect you're gonna get at a theme park hotel. But well, one that is very pleasantly surprising and just mm -hmm. incredibly tasty. I'm gonna go back to my ribs now. And for dessert, we're having the baked pineapple parfait. It's got macerated pineapple down at the bottom, white chocolate mousse, vanilla gluten-free sponge cake, which you can kind of see down there at the bottom, and then it is topped with crispy macadamia meringue. I love macadamia nuts. They are my favorite of the nut family. I'm super excited to try this. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. That's so light. I could eat 100 of the macadamia meringue because it tastes like macadamia nut, which is delicious. Wow. wow. That mousse is phenomenal. And the sponge cake has absorbed everything. Oh, wow. Cleanses the palate. The pineapple's just sweet enough to where it's not overpowering. I also really like the mousse. I love white chocolate. It's light. It's airy. And what I will say is gluten-free cake always tastes dry to me. No, yeah. I think on its own, this would be no exception. But with the juice from the pineapples and the mousse, it's a really good texture balance. Not only that, for a dessert, it's incredibly light and not super sweet. Um, this feels more like a palate cleanser at the end of a meal than it does a dessert, or like what you come to anticipate with like a chocolate or a very rich dessert. I just love the fact that it's not one textural note. Also, the restaurant manager let us know if you do the walk experience, they have little ones of this along with some other cakes, so you could try this if you do the walk experience, too. Wow, that's good. That's lovely. I'm, I'm pretty blown away by that, if I'm being honest. That, that's, that's very, very good. Our last stop here is Portofino Bay, which is another premier resort here at Universal Orlando, themed after Italia, with a beautiful fountain out front and a number of different Vespas as well, which I think Molly is going to go check out, or steal Fast and Furious style. I'm kind of hoping the second, honestly. I love this resort. It's my favorite one at Universal. I just love that you really feel like you have been 
transported to Italy and Alan is there and you're out here on the piazza where all the restaurants and the shops and there's gelato and it's just it's perfection. You could even say it's exquisite here. I think this needs to be our next universal staycation. Welcome inside Mamadella's, the Italian restaurant here, one of the many Italian eateries here, I should say. And it is themed to be you're visiting mama's house. You are headed inside uh, a lovely Italian mother, grandmother's home, and you can see all of the vintage wine bottles and photographs and the lighting and the wallpaper and everything in here just feels like you are being welcomed into someone's home. And the last time I was here, I had the most delicious risotto, and I'm super excited because I was just told lasagna's on the menu tonight. Okay, we just got even more information about the restaurant from the restaurant manager. Apparently, Mama Della, unfortunately, her husband, Papa, passed away, uh, but she wanted to continue cooking for the community of Portofino and for people, and they said, why don't you make a restaurant? And she said, well, I can't afford to build a restaurant. Uh, but like a lot of Europeans do, she converted the first floor of her home into a restaurant. And the manager is telling us it's very common for people to transform the first floor of their home into a restaurant or a shop or a flower shop or something along those lines. Um, so when you are in Mama Della's, you are in Mama Della's home, but she didn't have quite enough stuff to furnish it and to house enough people to join at a restaurant. So the community came together and brought her things from their homes so that she could open her restaurant, which is why you You'll see things like the chairs don't match when you go around the restaurant they're all different you'll notice different eclectic decorations and uh, wallpaper and you can also see into the kitchen because if you were at someone's home you'd be able to see into the kitchen so uh, each room's decorated a little bit differently because we are in a woman's home but I just think that is so cool and I love storytelling and I don't think people realize it extends to Universal and the hotels and the restaurants here just as much as it does down the road Buena sera. Uh my name is Annika Hampton. I'm the executive chef here at the Lowe's Portofino Hotel. Awesome. So we have some beautiful calamari in front of us. She was just explaining this is one of your number one sellers, most popular it items. Is, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, we go through uh, uh, lots of uh, calamari every night. Uh, what we do uh, here, a little bit unique from everybody, is that we take our bread and we actually dehydrate it and dry it out. And so this is a sourdough uh, breadings and we mix it with some, uh, we make a breadcrumb out of that and then we make an Italian seasoning uh, and uh, spice that we add to the flour and we, uh, we take the calamari, we soak it in buttermilk which tenderizes it and then we toss it, gently toss it into this, uh, uh, the, the breading and we flash fry at a very high temperature uh, and that's what makes it a little bit different than everybody. Uh, and we, of course, we garnish with capers and some, you know, some fresh lemons yeah. and uh, marinara sauce. I'm very excited to try it. And I know we also have some lasagna coming. What makes your lasagna special here? Oh, one of my favorite, you know. Uh, <laughs> we take great pride in uh, our uh, lasagna. Uh, this is something that we make every day. I mean, we're very passionate about it. You know, the lasagna, what makes it different, we use uh, top grade uh, uh, meat that uh, goes in there. It's, it's, uh, it's a bolognese. Uh, and uh, we layer it uh, and that's what makes it a little bit different I mean we do have a fresh mozzarella that goes in there as well too uh, there's about four to five layers of, of that yeah uh, I can't wait so everything's made in-house every day from scratch yes absolutely awesome. there's no other way yeah is that the same for the pastries as well for the cannoli Pastry as well too we make that in-house as well Ooh, I can't wait for all three courses I can't wait for you to try it thank you yeah. chef thank you thank you for thank coming you, I got our Italian feast, and I cannot believe this is the portion of one person's appetizer. This calamari is massive. Oh, I got a caper. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Mm. So light, incredibly tender. And the spicy marinara offsets my hands. it. Yeah, like well, I'm, you know what? <laughs> it's, it's all family. Yeah, that's true. It is literally a family restaurant. The spicy marinara is mm. so good because it offsets the sort of lightness and breadiness of the calamari itself. I'm a fan. But the breading, despite being fried and breading, isn't super heavy. You can no. tell they made it in-house and oh, light, please. despite, I mean, it's obviously fried seafood, so it's, you know, it's heavier than a vegetable, but the breading is light, it's delicious, that sauce is amazing. Mm. That said, I need to eat this lasagna right now. Let's go to town. How are you going for the bechamel side? I am a 
a white sauce girl, so I was very excited to see that it comes with both. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get married there too. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's simple, classic lasagna. It's got the ricotta cheese, meat, the white creamy bechamel sauce, as well as the marinara sauce, so you've got a natural sweetness from the tomatoes. I mean, it's just really good classic lasagna that you can tell was not Stouffer's heated up, which is what I make when I make lasagna. It's just fresh and delicious. And there's like six layers going on. This bread literally has a garlic clove in it. I've never seen you so happy. Except for when I had that queso like a couple hours ago. I don't know how they did it, but the pasta is actually perfectly al dente still. Remember that time that Kate Moss said nothing tastes as good as skinny feels? She was wrong. And last but not least, the cannoli. Cannoli. This is their house-made cannoli. It's got ricotta and chocolate chips, some fresh fruit on there. Good. Mm -hmm. Don't mind if I do. Cheers. I broke it. I'm sorry. It's probably bad luck. Like, you're gonna have an Italian grandmother mad at you now. Well, that's delicious. A good cannoli is such a delicious, and I often think underrated dessert. Maybe it's not actually underrated, maybe I just forget that cannolis exist. But this has got the most delectable filling. It's ricotta cheese and chocolate chips, so it's definitely sweet, it's a dessert but it's not super, super sweet as if this was like some kind of vanilla or like pudding or mousse or something like that. It's also very light when it stands up to an incredibly crispy exterior along with the rich chocolate chips. I mean, it's it's understated enough to, to not overpower your palate, which is nice. If it had added too much sweetness or if it had been over seasoned like vanilla or something, then there, I, I would be confused with everything going on, but that's just a great compliment. Delicious, simple. Sweetness, simple deliciousness. That's what I always say. I like with desserts. And this one's my favorite one in Paddle Day. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, you heard it here first. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm full. I had so much lasagna and so much bread, but it was delicious. Oh. We did a little math. And again, Magical Dining went that all four of these locations we went to would be $40 per person for that three course prefix meal. The actual value of the meals we added everything up at uh islands it would be 48 dollars at amatista it would be 60 dollars at uh the kitchen we didn't do an appetizer today at the kitchen so we just picked one and it was going to be 53 one, 51 dollars and here at mamadella's it was 56 dollars so if you come enjoy magical dining month here at universal or other locations you are definitely getting a lot of food for the cost and it's a great way to sample restaurants that maybe you wouldn't go to otherwise absolutely so i have to know yeah first of all let's do a precursor before i ask this question okay all of the food that we had today was delicious yeah um it was really a great showcase of what all of these locations can do and the work of the chef and the culinary team there but i gotta know yeah what your favorite was of each course so let's start oh. with apps the oh, cheese the queso fundido cheese for me, it was the calamari. What about for the entree? For me, it was the kitchen burger. That was very good. Although all the entrees were delicious, it goes without saying. And I loved the lasagna, but I want to give a special shout out to the sticky ribs because those surprised me the most. And what about dessert? Very close race with the cannoli and the rum cake over at Amatista. Both of those were great, and I would get them both again. And a dark horse, it was the uh, pineapple parfait for me. Oh, another great choice. Yeah. Another great choice. Well, that concludes our dining adventure. Thank you again to Universal Orlando and Lowe's Hotels for inviting us out to eat as much as we possibly could for Magical Dining Month. I already can't wait to eat at more restaurants once this event officially kicks off. Oh yeah, for sure. In the meantime, friends, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, join us in the conversation on Discord, all those links are down below. And let us know if you will be headed somewhere for Magical Dining Month. It kicks off, I'm so full. It <laughs> My brain doesn't work anymore. It's full of cheese. It kicks and off garlic. August 18th. Yes. August 18th runs through October 1st. Plenty of time to eat at a lot of delicious restaurants. So until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan.
and it's been delicious. It has been. Goodbye. I need a nap. I need coffee. Ooh.